Hi, it's so good to see you again. It's been a while since I put up a video, but let's dive right into it. This video is very different from any other video I've ever put on my channel. Uh, this video contains very hot button political issues, uh, things that people are very passionate about and very upset about right now. And so if videos like this are going to send you into orbit and going to get you all upset and stirred up, you know, feel free. I won't be offended. Just click off this video. You can keep scrolling. Um, and please also, uh, I don't mind from people who disagree with me, but please, I remind you to please be very respectful of your comments on this channel. I would appreciate that. Um, all right, so let's dive into it. This video really highlights what I believe are important things God wanted me to um, talk about in this video, which is uh, the connection between President Trump, President Truman, and Israel and how important it is for what's going on in today um, and so and why it's so important um, this whole election process the integrity of our elections and um, what's important also to note is I am of the group of people who are continuing to pray for this election process I do not believe that the election process is over uh, for the 2020 elections and so I continue to pray for the election process and for um, truth and integrity um, and um, honesty uh, to rule the day uh, and so that's kind of where I am if some of you people some people may know about me that I've been a part of the prayer movement for at least the past 10 years um, prayer movement when I say that I mean you know you may be familiar with International House of Prayer in Kansas City uh, with Mike Bickle and all the wonderful people up there. Um, and so I, uh, when I learned that there was a House of Prayer here in the Dallas area, um, I made that my church home and that was about 10 years ago. And right now that church is called Storehouse Church. But before that, when they first started, when I was going there 10 years ago, they were called the House of Zerubbabel. And people, first of all, when they, when they started this church, people were like, House of who? What? How do you spell that? It's, how, do you, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> who is Zerubbabel? I've never heard of him in the Bible. Um, but that's important to note because there is a lot of talk about uh, Zerubbabel about uh, scripture surrounding Zerubbabel, about the scripture surrounding um, Israel being uh, saved by God and uh, delivered from captivity back in biblical times. There has been um, a lot of prophets uh, who, well, I say a lot, but I believe that there are some prophets who are very credible, very uh, Bible-based, who have been saying that God has been talking to them about Zerubbabel and focusing their attentions on scripture surrounding Zerubbabel. Um, so let me just, the one thing that you need to know if you're not familiar with Zerubbabel, what you need to know is uh, that Zerubbabel, uh, back in biblical times, uh, when Israel was taken into, cap into captivity by the Babylonians, um, at the end of that captivity, which was 70 years, um, there was a governor called Zerubbabel, and it was also the prophet Haggai and uh, one other player, the priest, I can't think of right now. But anyway, um, at the, the 70th year, God raised up uh, a Babylonian king named Cyrus, and Cyrus gave favor to the Israelites and said, you know, it's been 70 years, I'm going to release you to go back uh, to uh, what's now known as Israel and rebuild the temple, uh, the great temple uh, uh, of God, uh, that was destroyed at the time that they were taken into captivity. They are now 70 years later being released to go back and rebuild the temple. Okay, so why is that important now? And what's going on with Israel? Uh, and it just so happens to um, the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, pastors, uh, uh, senior pastors that lead up storehouse or what was then called House of Zerubbabel. Um, it is um, the House of Prayer in the Dallas area. They are John and Tracy Eckerd. And Tracy, of course, God in his infinite wisdom and timing, last month she releases a book. 
And what's the book about? Um, and I get no, pe- I don't get a penny from this, but I just love her. And so her book is God's End Time Temple. And she talks about the, per- the prophetic blueprint for Zerubbabel's temple uh, and a worldwide awakening. And so why is it important? Why are people kind of focused on that? Well, next year, 2021, is the 70th anniversary of Israel becoming a nation, becoming a sovereign entity, becoming in, coming back into existence. And so I started you know, to think to myself, okay, you know, what else significant is going on right now with Israel? What's going on? Um, back in uh, 2015, if I uh, remember correctly, Back in 2015, uh, there were very credible, again, very, I believe, Bible-based people, prophetic people, and if I make sure that I'm quoting the correct person, I believe it was Lance Wallnau who stated that God was going to be raising up a type and shadow, a kind of Cyrus, um, that in this hour who was going to be doing something very important. connected to Israel. Now, uh, before I go any further, please don't send me any emails saying that you said that Israel's about to build the temple or the the temple's been built already. It's been hidden somewhere, whatever. I don't know what God's timing is uh, about building a third temple. Um, I know that there are um, some Christians who don't believe that it's going to be a third temple built. There are some Christians that do. Um, and believe that evangelical Christ, uh, Christians believe that there is going to be a third temple that is built and that uh, is an important part of eschatology, which is a fancy word for saying end time, uh, the study of end time prophecy or the study of the end times um, and how that plays into uh, the Armageddon and, and uh, the end of the age. Okay, but kind of putting that aside, um, I do believe that there, God is moving moderately in Israel. Um, I believe that God is, has uh, used um, President Trump as a, a type and shadow of Cyrus, King Cyrus, uh, to bring great favor to Israel. And have we seen that? Yes, we have seen that. Um, we've, we've seen over and over again um, you know, since he's taken office, he has uh, shown great favor and a great commitment uh, to Israel. Um, and we see that when two years ago, he, the United States recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and moved the U.S. Embassy there. Now, um, Congress back in 1995 uh, first passed uh, the... Uh, the documents that allow that would allow uh, the United States to move the embassy to Jerusalem, but no other president did that before President Trump. Um, and you know, right before when he was proposing that he was going to do that, you know, a lot of people were saying this is a terrible idea. You're going to start World War III, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but he has been steadfast in his commitment, um, and he did it. And What's the other things that are going on? How is President Trump showing great favor? Uh, We see that in August of this year, August, actually there was a press release August 13, 2020, uh, that uh, there was a normalization of relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. I mean, that is just absolutely historic. I mean, that is just utterly amazing. And I'm really going to date myself, and I'm fine with that. Everybody in the world knows how old I am anyway. So um, I'm about to turn 52. And I remember back when I was a kid, President Carter, there was something called the Camp David Accords. And there was a secret meeting uh, that President Carter had between was then the president of Egypt, who was Anwar Sadat, and the prime minister of Israel, who was Menachem Begin. I hope I said that right. Uh, And 
they met for 12 days and then they came to this agreement that they were going to then uh, move towards uh, finalizing a peace treaty. Um, so they had this Camp David Accord, I believe it was September of 1978, and then I believe it was March of 1979, they did actually sign a peace treaty. And back then that was just such a historic thing. I remember just hearing about that and trying to understand it as a kid and it was, that was just amazing. All right, so, we, so we've had, again, uh, in August 13, 2020, this announcement of normalization of relations between Israel and United Arab Emirates. Then we, uh, two months, just about two months later, October 19, 2020, uh, there's a press release that the Kingdom of Bahrain and Israel are in talks uh, to establish a dip, uh, diplomatic, a stronger diplomatic relations, um, trying to strengthen and find a way to cooperate uh, with, uh, you know, economic, uh, agricultural communications, you know, financial ways that they can strengthen and partner together. I mean, that is just amazing. Then. October 23rd, 2020, there's another press release that is a historic peace agreement between Israel and the Sudan. So we have uh, three Muslim majority countries who have made some substantial steps moving forward to recognize and cooperate with Israel. I mean, that is just, I. It's hard for me to find words for that. I mean, that is just amazing. I mean, God is moving mightily and giving great favor to Israel. I mean, let's just be honest. God has always historically, been, you know, there's, there's no reason why Israel exists anyway. I mean, if that in and of itself is every day is a miracle. Um, but this, God is moving mightily. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that you know, I believe the temple is going to be built tomorrow. Um, uh, the third great temple in uh, Jerusalem is going to be built tomorrow. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that God, his plans, you know, he's moving mightily in Israel. And it's important uh, for the United States to partner and support Israel uh, for God's plans and purposes. And I believe that uh, President Trump is a type and shadow of a Cyrus. Um, and if I, if I remember correctly, I do believe also that uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu did, in fact, kind of comment and and um, gave, I think, President Trump some type of coin or something saying that, yeah, you know, we remember King Cyrus. Uh, and so God is moving mightily. Have we seen this before? How does President Truman tie into all of this? Just like uh, I believe that, you know, President Trump was raised up just we see the same type of parallels with President Truman. Um, President Truman, um, I don't believe wasn't wasn't an attorney either. He was a county judge uh, before he uh, won his uh, place in the Senate, uh, and then uh, became uh, vice president. Then became president uh, when um, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed away. Uh, then. One other uh, thing that God raised up uh, Truman to do was in uh, 1947, I believe, uh, I always forget it was 1947 or 1948, um, Israel uh, became a nation. It was reestablished uh, by the UN. And uh, it was something like, you know, within uh, 10 minutes or 11 minutes, I think, 11 meaning transition, um, he, uh, President Truman uh, recognized Israel as a sovereign nation. And so I believe that God raised him up. And I just think also too, kind of parenthetical, parenthetically, you know, I, God, he's amazing even with using names, you know, people, you know, joke about, and I know there was a movie uh, entitled, you know, Trump card, et cetera, et cetera. But even President Truman, a true man, to recognize Israel, a true man to be to raise up and show Israel favor. Um, and so uh, 
you know, God was moving mightily back then through President Truman getting Israel established um, and showing Israel support and favor. Um, and so that's one way that President Trump and President Truman are connected. Um, the second way is um, there was, one moment. Ah, all right. So how does this all tie in to um, what's going on? The second way that there is a connection between uh, President Truman and uh, President Trump is um, what's going on in the country as far as a move uh, or a strong influence of uh, people who believe that we should move away from our uh, foundational principles uh, being one country under God, um, having the types of religious freedoms that we have, um, and you know, do we, do we see that also with Truman? Yes, we saw that in his time. We see that now. We, saw, we see that back in his time. Um, some of you may be familiar with the uh, phrase McCarthyism. Um, and so back after uh, World War II, uh, President Truman uh, was really dealing with um, Russia and uh, Russia being uh, very aggressive and trying to expand their um, territory and their influence uh, in uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, and so that was one thing that, uh, that um, President Truman contended with. Um, also at the same time after World War II here in this country, um, there was, at the time they called it uh, anti-American activities um, people who were advocating the overthrow of the, comp of the government, advocating um, that there should be uh, very strong uh, Marxist and socialist policies uh, to replace um, um, the capitalist uh, structure. You saw that back uh, in you know, 1948, 1949, 1950, etc. We see, we're seeing that again today. There is a rise uh, in that school of thought and a push to move away from uh, uh, our foundational principles. And we see that there is a parallel between President Trump and President uh, Truman. It's also very interesting, and I didn't leave the least for last, but this is um, fascinating. Um, I won't have time to edit this and put uh, a picture of it, but if you Google the 1948 election and, and you put in Pre uh, President Truman in 1948 election, you're most likely going to see a picture that comes up uh, with uh, President Truman holding a um, news headline. I believe it was the Chicago Daily Tribune, uh, and it says... You see uh, President Truman with a big cheesy smile on his face and the headline says, Dewey wins. And uh, what happened was the media had proclaimed uh, the Republican uh, nominee for, for president to be uh, the person who won the election. And in fact, President Truman won the election. And so, you know, for people who, um, people who are close to me or in even uh, other uh, uh, friends and family who just can't understand, Laura, why are you continuing to pray for this election process? Why are you continuing to, what's going on? And I say, we have seen this before. We have seen it before. And um, I believe uh, the way things are happening today, uh, I'll just say that uh, I don't have um, a trust that there is a free press anymore. That's just the bottom line. And so um, I have done a total military silence, total blackout of any, um, any news at all, um, at least for the past six weeks, if not longer. Um, and so I am 
continuing to rest upon the uh, prophetic words that were released, um, the things that I have been seeing and believing in my spirit that's going on. Um, and so I believe the same thing is going on here. Um, I don't believe that um, this election process is over and I um, am really contending for the truth and the integrity of the election process. One thing that um, I believe that a lot of people have a hard time understanding. Um, there is someone that's very close to me, and you know, he said, "Laura, you know, why, why are you, why are you continuing to pray? I don't understand this. You know, just get over yourself, get over this. It's been subtle. Um, you know, he's like, you know, because you know, at this point, you know, this person who's close to me, you know, was like, you know what, you know, even before the election, and he was like, you know what, I'm just, I'm kind of over this. I'm done. It's a wrap." You know, I don't like either side. I think they're all crooks, you know, and I just, I don't even have the stomach to be bothered with this stuff anymore. You know, this, you know, people get in the office and they do what they want to do anyway and whatever. And I try to explain to people how incredibly dangerous that is. I can't believe, I can't remember who the famous person was um, who said uh, after World War II, the only thing that evil needs to uh, rise up in the world is for good people to do nothing. And that's exactly what the enemy has done, you know, over the past, you know, years and decades, you know, all the shenanigans that have gone on, you know, all the irregularities and people who have gotten to office and done bad things with money and with other people and, you know, gotten to scandal and all that business. You know, the enemy wants to use that to offend good people and to lose hope and faith in the election process. And so to the point where they can't even stomach and don't even want to be bothered anymore because they believe people are going to do whatever they want to do. And it, and it, and it really doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter if they vote. It doesn't matter, you know, for them to look into, you know, a person's voting record, whatever it is. The enemy wants to offend the, a good person so that they don't care anymore. You know, they have this paralysis of analysis thing like, you know what, this is a wrap, I'm over it. And that's such a dangerous place to be. And I think that there is a significant group, a significant number of people who feel that way. And I want to submit to you that please don't fall into that trap. Yeah, you know, you may have to go, you know, you may have to think about the election process and hold your nose. I get it. Um, but one thing to remember, I absolutely believe is true. There's nothing that is stagnant when it comes to evil. And what do I mean by that? I mean that there's, there's no such thing as status quo. You're either moving towards God or moving away from God. There's, there's no, there's no stagnation. There's no kind of, you know, helicopter hovering. You're either moving towards or away. So if you're moving away from God, obviously evil is growing. And once evil sees that you've taken your eye off the ball, you know, all, all bets are off and they become more and more emboldened, more and more brazen and more and more depraved. And I mean that in every sense of the word, depraved. And so you take your eye off the ball and horrible, horrible, horrible things happen before you even know it, uh, right under your nose. And so I submit to you, yeah, it may be hard to look at. Yes, um, it's hard to hold people accountable but you always have to believe that that's important. That's important. So please, please, please don't take your eye off the ball. Don't think that, you know, it really doesn't matter because they're going to do what they're going to do. You know, both sides stink. Yeah, there are problems on both sides, but you know, you never know if God is raising you up to be the solution. Maybe he's been tapping you on the shoulder to run for whatever, you know, city council and then, you know, He's going to uh, raise you up from there. Who knows? Who knows if God is raising you up for such a time as this? So 
I hope I didn't beat a dead horse, but just hear my heart on that. Don't turn away. God is with you. It's not too ugly to look at. God is with you. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about and uh, is why is it I feel like God um, has raised uh, Donald Trump up and why I believe uh, so strongly that the prophetic words, um, these prophetic people who I believe are absolutely Bible-based and are ethical, um, and I believe that they did truly hear from God. Why did they say that uh, President Trump ha will have two terms and why do I still believe that today, you know, Monday, December 7th, 2020, why do I still believe that? I believe that, that um, there is a, we are right there at a third great awakening. There is a, uh, a global harvest that God wants to bring in and he started the process already. And this great harvest, this great awakening, um, God uh, wants this move of his spirit to bring in souls into his kingdom because time is short. And I know that many people say, you know, there's so many generations before us have always thought that they're in the end times. Yeah, that's, that's true. There were a lot of people who believed that they were in the end times. But, um, you know, yes, no, no man knows the time of the day that um, Jesus, Jesus is going to return. But God did say that there are signs in the generation of the return of the king or the return of Jesus. And there are certain things that we can look for within that. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that kind of eschatology, which is just a fancy word for end time study uh, or um, the study of end time prophecy. But um, I will say um, that I believe that God has started that. Um, why do I believe that? Um, the United States uh, historically has been the country far and above who has sponsored uh, global missions work. Um, so far, uh, well, historically, missions work um, has been to people who had some type of knowledge or have heard of Jesus. Um, but in recent years, there has been an effort or a push to reach un what they call unreached people groups. Uh, people groups who have never heard of Jesus, who have never come into contact with a missionary, who have, you know, don't have any uh, exposure or experience to Christianity. And so... You may have heard of things like the 1040 window, uh, which is uh, that geographical area, area that's 10 degrees north through 40 degrees north, uh, I think is uh, longitude of the equator, uh, that geographical area to reach those people groups. Um, you associate with that is the Joshua Project. Um, but I seem to remember not too long ago, um, probably about seven or eight years ago, I seem to remember someone said that the U.S. sponsors 95% of global missions work. I looked and looked and looked last night. I could not find the actual percentage number, but some of the other information that I saw, you know, United States just blows it out of the park far and above uh, any other country. Uh, the U.S. sponsors missions work. Um, and so the enemy absolutely does not want to spread the gospel worldwide and to reach unreached people groups. Um, and so he's not very happy about that. But that's one of the reasons why I believe that uh, God is, is moving a great harvest. Uh, the second uh, reason is um, there was a, a gentleman who was also uh, a um, very respected uh, very well-known prophet. His name was Bob Jones. And um, Bob Jones had a mighty encounter back in the 70s with God. And uh, he always maintained, if I remember correctly, he said that God said that he would live to see the start of the great harvest. Now, Bob Jones went on to be with the Lord, I believe it was uh, 2014. And um, he was starting to see, you know, people who are were, um, you know, just becoming more, there's a heightened hunger for uh, global prayer, for learning more about the gospel, and people just committed themselves to, or having an, at least an interest in doing missions work and spreading the gospel and people just coming to the Lord. 
And so um, that was the, the main thing, you know, the, the strike point that people were looking at. Okay, you know, Bob Jones went on to be with the Lord. God must be starting the great harvest. Uh, and what's also in, important is you start to see just as um, people who are kind of sick and tired of the status quo. People are, you know, who are saying, uh, I think it was uh, Leonard Ravenhill who uh, said something to the effect that, you know, if this is Christianity, if this is all that is, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's a huge disappointment. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's a lie. This can't be it. Um, and there is a hunger to see God's power. We're starting to see an increased hunger and people are asking, you know, God says that we have weapons to pull down strongholds. What are they? You know, how do I use them? You know, we're starting to see God pour out his spirit. People are having dreams and visions. I mean, there is just such a huge spike in God speaking to people. Even uh, we hear in reports um, in uh, Muslim majority countries that people are having dreams about Jesus and it, it, people who had open visions and said that they saw Jesus speaking to them and you know just people having these radical encounters with the Lord we're starting to see all these things happen um, the past you know 10 years or so we're seeing the rise of the church in China um, and how that is just exploding you know, we're, we're seeing tangible evidence of God moving uh, and God awakening his people. And we know it's God's heart. He never wants to see anyone perish. We know it's his heart that he wants to save as many people as possible. Um, and so we, we're seeing that. We're seeing, you know, we have, I was watching, uh, I was watching a gentleman evangelist, a very respected evangelist, uh, Mario Morello. And he's having these tent crusades in California. And, you know, some people, you know, he was saying, you know, people are criticizing him. You know, why are you spending your time and effort in California? You know, California doesn't want God. You know, it's a lost cause. Why don't you focus elsewhere? You know, your money be spent better and time spent better elsewhere. And, you know, he just gives these amazing testimonies about, you know, having these tent crusades and, you know, having, I think he said, you know, 700, 800 seats and 1,200 people showed up, you know, something like that. I mean, it was just, it's just amazing, you know, you know, these people who would think that they're so far away from God, whether they're gang members or whatever, who are just weeping and just their hearts just being absolutely tenderized by the presence of God in these tent revivals in California. Uh, and so, you know, we're seeing things like that. We're seeing you know, respected people, Bible-based people who are saying they are seeing a mighty move of God. And so between uh, us seeing this great harvest about all the prophetic words that have spoken about uh, the great harvest in the end times uh, and, the, and the generation that the, that the uh, or near the generation that the Lord returns, um, there's people having... Um, prophetic words, dreams, and visions about the great harvest and about the time being now and how important it is for us to be able to have the freedom to sponsor and, and the finances, the, the support of the economy to support uh, global missions and also for us to maintain our religious freedoms uh, and not being in fear of saying, yes, we believe in Jesus. I mean, I am a radical lover of Jesus and I make no apologies for it. And there are some people who would say that's absolute hate speech. Um, and it's who I am. I make no apologies for it. I will always love Jesus. And so we still need the freedom to be able to worship and read our Bibles and um, have the religious freedoms that, that we've always enjoyed. And there's this great push now to stamp that out, to stifle it, to change it, to eliminate it. And why is the enemy choosing now, this time fighting so hard to shut down the economy that's going to uh, be the um, engine that's going to sponsor the uh, mission's uh, efforts to spread the gospel worldwide? Why is he trying so hard to stamp out our 
religious beliefs and have us to have a chilling effect on our speech and us not being able to um, worship uh, and um, profess our, our love of God and our love of Jesus. Why is the enemy trying so hard this hour to do it? Because God is about to move. There's about to be a great harvest. There's about to be a great move of God and a great harvest reaping of souls into God's kingdom. Uh, and that's why the, it, it has just been an all out raging battle. Um, and so that's why I continue to press in. I continue to believe. I continue to keep my words in agreement with heaven. I continue to say, God, no matter what it looks like in the natural, I'm going to believe you. You know, there's nothing that's too difficult for God. You know, God is moving so mightily in Israel. You know, I believe that there's going to be a great harvest there. Um, and that there's going to be so many, uh, uh, Jewish people who will come to the knowledge and believe and confess and dedicate their lives to Jesus. I'm so excited. Um, but we also, in order to do that, need to make sure, um, that we continue to partner with Israel. Um, God always says, you know, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, uh, and those who bless Israel will be blessed by God. And so I will always be a supporter of Israel. I will always, my words will always speak a blessing over Israel, over the Jewish people. Um, they are precious. They are um, chosen. Uh, God loves them and they're precious to him. And that's more than enough for me. Um, and so it is crucial um, that we not, not only continue um, with all the, the, policies towards Israel, um, all of the uh, ways to this tug of war with uh, religious freedoms, you know, it is absolutely crucial. Please, again, don't turn away. I know it's, it may be difficult to look at. To some people, they just don't believe um, uh, what may happen. You know, you start to hear, you know, some people have heard, you know, people are crazy. What are they talking about? You know, you're not going to be able to uh, talk about Jesus anymore, or you're not going to be able to, um, you know, ha have religious freedoms. They just don't believe that that's on the agenda of certain people. But, you know, I believe that it is, and, it, and I will continue to press in. I believe that there is nothing more important than me to stay focused um, on um, prayer when I wake up and prayer before I go to sleep and, and all the times in between. You know, one thing that struck me, I was also, I was listening to Mario Murillo and he said, you know, there are some people that say that they have a prayer life. And then there are some people that say that they have a life of prayer. And I am still working on saying, transitioning from saying that I have a prayer life to saying that I have a life of prayer. And so I, I try every day to make more and more progress towards that. And I hope that that's something that you would consider as well. Um, again, you know, um, if you don't agree with me, I'm fine with that. Please, again, just be respectful of the comments on this channel um, and on this video. And so that's why I think it's so important. I do believe it's not about, you know, being all enamored about Donald Trump and about the personality and about who he is, you know, it's, it's not, it's not about that. It's about what is God, what do I see God doing in the earth and who do I believe that God raised up in this hour to accomplish his plans and purposes, his dreams for this country. And you'd have to, you know, as, as Sid Roth always says, you need help to be confused. You know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's obvious that it's, it's Donald Trump and it's, it's, you know, He's human, um, but God has his hand on him, and that's what I will always believe. So um, I think I'm going to uh, just uh, uh, wrap it up here, um, but I hope, that, uh, I hope that I was able to explain um, why I believe there's such a connection between President Trump, President Truman, and Israel, and what God is doing on the earth, and you know, his, his plan for his children and to bless his children, not just, not just to bless Israel, but to, but 
to bring in this harvest and how it's so, so important to make sure that we keep our freedoms and we keep our connection and support of Israel because it's what God wants. And if, if God said it, that's good enough for me. If that's what God wants. If that's what I want to rally the causes that are on God's heart. And one of the, I'll leave you with this, one of the prophetic uh, things that's in uh, Tracy Eckert's book that she talks about, the, the prophetic words that was uh, spoken, was that we should not uh, fall prey or fall into the trap of false comparison of comparing what God did in the past and limiting him to what he's planning on doing now because it is a false comparison. It, it won't be any comparison to what God is about to do now. So don't have this connection with, oh, I'm going to limit God because of uh, what I believe was my past experience or what I believe is past history of what God has done. It won't, it, it, it will pale so much it, towards what God is about to do um, and what he is doing and I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I pray that this video made sense. I pray that this video is enlightening. Um, and uh, if you uh, found this video to be helpful and informative, you know, give me a thumbs up, share, 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 share. Um, and um, I just speak a blessing over you. And I thank you for watching. I thank you for staying all the way to the end and watching. And um, I'm not sure if, if there's going to be a part two to this video or um, how God may have an offshoot of this video. I'm just not sure. I'm still staying in prayer for greater revelation about uh, what he wants to do. Um, but uh, stay blessed, stay safe, um, and I'll see you next time.